Welcome to the Kwawu 3 wrap arm assembly video. We're going to put together the plastic wrap arm and the leather version of the wrap arm together in a single video. There's only a slight variation between the two, so I'm going to combine these two into one video. Um, no matter which one you're building, you'll be able to, to follow along with both. I'm doing a child size plastic arm and an adult size leather arm just for some variation in the video. So in a previous video, you should have already put and strung the hand together for the arm you're building. In this video, we're gonna be attaching the hand to the arm. So let's go get started and put together the plastic parts first. I've got these two millimeter rods and you can get these two millimeter rods on Amazon. They're called axles or toy axles or something like that. You can also use an average wire or coat hanger is also a two millimeter rod. We're gonna mix up some two-part epoxy. We're using a lot of two-part epoxy in this video. That's how we're putting everything together. It really holds the pet G together well, so it's what I recommend. You can use CA glue, but it just doesn't hold as well as the two-part epoxy. These are sort of big joins, and you really want something that's gonna fill the join and hold it. So I'm gonna put a lot of epoxy on this, on the rods, and um, put these two pieces together. I'm gonna mix up some more. I really mix up the epoxy as I use it. This stuff sets really fast. If it starts to set, it really won't bond anymore. So you don't wanna, you wanna mix up only as much as you're gonna use on each joint. I'm putting lots of epoxy here. Now that I've got, oh, for the base of the arm, all six parts epoxy together, I'm gonna to put some paper over this just so I can some, put some weight on it and let it dry overnight. All right, let's put the leather arm together. The leather. Um, has the same two millimeter rods, no matter what size the arm is, they're always two millimeter. Again, lots of epoxy. Here we don't have the flat plastic parts because that's gonna be leather, and we're just putting together the stiffeners. You should have cleaned all these parts in the previous video um, to make sure, and just make sure they fit together well. They should slide together really clean, and clean off the excess glue, and let these parts sit aside to dry overnight. Okay, now that these plastic parts have dried overnight, I'm just gonna clean off a little bit and make sure that everything holds together well. It should flex really good, feel nicely bonded. For this small child size arm, I did heat it up off camera with a hot air gun. Shouldn't have to with a larger size. I did find with a child size, it's just a little easier to heat it up and make it a little more rounded. All right, we're gonna put the wrist attachment in here. Again, a lot of glue on this edge. I really want this to bond well. Um, it's going to take a lot of force. The hand tries to flex against this arm. There are number four pan head sheet metal screws holding this in. You'll need various lengths, but they're all the same type of screw. Um, if you're outside of the U.S., that's a three millimeter pan head sheet metal screw. And once this is dry, I'm going to make sure this end is flat. I've actually filed this end a little bit to make sure that it's nice and flat so that the wrist can twist against it well. Um, it tends to stick up a little bit or isn't, isn't exactly flat. The arm pieces against the wrist piece. I wanna file that nice and clean. Here's the hand that I put together in the previous video and we're gonna go ahead and attach that to the arm. First thing I'm gonna do is put the wrist bolt in here. Again, I should have tried that and make sure that it fits nicely. It should spin, it shouldn't be any wobble. It should be a really snug fit and spin freely, but also not wobble. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover on here. This is the last time I'm assembling the wrist bolt together, so just make sure it fits nice and smooth. So we can now screw these two parts together, the wrist and the arm. And again, we've cleaned all these parts before, so I know they're gonna to go together well. You'll notice that there's four slots all the way around the wrist bolt, that this cotter pin could fit in any one of the four slots. Just tighten the arm and wrist down as tight as you can get it, and then back it off to the last quarter slot, so you're you know, roughly a quarter turn off, so everything still spins nice and freely. Now that we've got the plastic arm together, let's go back to the leather version. In the leather version, you should have printed out your leather templates. They're SVG files. I found that Google Chrome prints at the right scale directly. Take your 3D printed parts, hold it up, make sure that the holes line up. Then you can cut out your design and transfer it to the leather. If you printed large, more than one piece of paper, just tape them together. Leather cuts pretty easy with a utility knife. Um, I'm no leather expert, but this seemed to work pretty well. I have found it's worth it just to go ahead and get a leather punch. Order one of these online. They're made to do this. They work beautifully. Anything else and the hole is just a little rough. It doesn't quite fit right. 
I'm using these copper rivets. Sorry, I just took a photo. I didn't get this filmed because I was outside so I could pound it on a piece of metal. Um, these copper rivets are pretty easy to use. They're, I like them because the shaft is thin, three millimeters, and you can cut it off at any length. So you just put the copper rivets through, cut them off with a big pair of pliers, like lineman pliers, and then use this special tool that you, that you order as well, just to hit the end to round it off nice and smooth. Now you can hit it too hard and break the plastic. I've now put together a whole bunch of these and not had any trouble, I only broke one or two. And from then on out, I realized just how hard you have to hit to not break the plastic. Now, if you've got a bigger arm, then you can go ahead and use these Chicago screws. You can order these. All right, we're gonna mix up some more epoxy for the leather side. Here I am, I'm gonna use two-part epoxy to bond the wrist bolt attachment to the leather itself. I've just found the two-part epoxy is the best thing to bond leather to plastic. Right? Again, I'm using these number four pan head sheet metal screws on both sides, just like the plastic version, to give it that extra strength. But you still really want the plenty of epoxy in there to make sure that bond is really good. All right, I've let this dry for 24 hours. And now again, just like the plastic version, I'm gonna clean this wrist attachment nice and flat. You can see it just picks up a little bit and I want it nice and flat so the hand can rotate against this without any catches at all. And whether it's plastic or leather, I want this button to be able to press down and pop up easily and not get caught on that arm. All right, let's run the thread in the plastic version. So I found it easier to sort of run the thread from the top down through the center of the hole in the bolt, and then just tie a knot in the top of the whipple tree. Put some CA glue on this knot like I always do, let that set, and then we're gonna go ahead and do the ratchet. The ratchet, just like assembling the arm, I've used this two millimeter rod. Again, no matter what size your arm is, it's always a two millimeter rod at the center of this ratchet latch. I'm gonna mark it, where I want to cut it, and then again use maybe some lineman pliers to cut the rod, and then insert it back in here. Now I'm going to test with the ratchet itself and just make sure everything fits okay. Again, another number four pan head sheet metal screw to hold the cover of this on. Here you want to make sure the length is short enough that it doesn't go into the arm, but otherwise it's the same type of screw. I really like this tensioner because I just run the thread through the center of the tensioner and then I can spin the tensioner around as many times as I want to to adjust the tension. So even after this arm is assembled, I can adjust the tension by just popping this square out, rotating it a few times and sticking it back in. Now I realize I assembled this cuff in this video. I'm actually going to assemble the cuff in the next video because the cuff is the same whether you're doing the socket or the wrap or whatever design. So you'll see how to assemble the cuff in the next video. But I didn't film it in that order, so sorry for showing that in this video. So I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this, and thanks for all your interest in the Quawu 3.